Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with RSU TV at Roger State University in Oklahoma. Today we are chatting with Mike Wilt, Executive Director of the Bartlesville Community Foundation, who has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. Thank you, Mike, for joining us today. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, the Community Foundation provides an enabling service for philanthropy, for communities to help themselves, for people with means to share those means with others. Talk about the work of the foundation, how it was founded, and, and what its footprint is today. It's hard to believe, but community foundations have actually been around for a hundred years. They actually started in Cleveland, Ohio, and, uh, but it's still a relatively uh, new concept to a lot of people. And basically what a community foundation is and what we like to say is we're tapping into the power of together. And so what we do is we bring people together, bring their resources together, and they can do more together than they can as individuals for, and you hit the, the, the word right on, is philanthropy. And uh, one of the good things about a community foundation is that we're not pigeonholed into a certain segment or we don't have members that have narrow field of interest. Whatever your philanthropic interest is, we're there to meet it. And at a certain point, you reach a scale in which you're guided now no longer by the individuals who are trying to uh, develop resources, which are so incredibly scarce. Now you've reached a scale where you can be guided by community interests in a broader base, as well as the individuals who are contributing. So you actually are enabling a dialogue between um, uh, need and means. Exactly. And we have dialogue, to use your word, uh, every day mm -hmm. at the office. Where we, we try to make it easy on the donor and on the recipient. You know, we, we provide the back office support. Uh, we're already a 501c3 organization, so you're, that's one of the organ uh, one of the advantages. You're a service organization. Exactly. You are you are a service you're a professional services organization. You could uh, like like an attorney, an accountant, you're providing a professional service. You're enabling philanthropy in certain respects. Well, aspects. we work I'm glad you mentioned that because we're actually a pretty small office. I mean, there's me, I've got our director of operations and then an accounting manager. We also have a board of, of 13, which is a great cross-section of the community. Actually, it probably would surprise you. We're, we're pretty even, male and female, but uh, about half our board is, are in their 30s. But what we do is uh, we have what's called an allied professionals program. And so we uh, provide a service to those that are that don't know really where to begin. Right. And in fact, we just recently completed uh, kind of a little starter kit, if you will, on, okay, if you don't know where to start, here's what you do. And there's some questions that you need to answer. Here's some information you need to fill out. And then you can take that to whoever it is that you trust to handle your affairs and get you going. And uh, we like to say that, you know, there are some organizations that, um, operate on a daily basis. They're concerned with, you know, day-to-day -day operations. Mm -hmm. We're kind of concerned with uh, and focused on the future. How, how can we help people benefit and meet their charitable interest well after they're gone? Right. And so we're kind of the savings account, if you will, of, of, the, of the community when it comes to uh, philanthropic interests. And you're talking here about leveraging the 501c3 uh, tax status as well to make it very convenient. So you don't have to, if you are a donor and you want to give, establish your own 501c3, your own nonprofit. Uh, you can also park your, your uh, funds uh, with the community foundation for future um, distribution. So you don't have to be in a rush to ensure that, that uh, you, you, can, you can take your, your tax deduction now move those funds into a reserve account, and then with all due planning, make sure that those funds actually have the impact that you intend. Yes, like I said, and that's part of making it easy on uh, the donor, is uh, instead of going out and, and going through, for lack of a better term, the bureaucracy, the mm -hmm. paperwork, the expense of setting up a, a family foundation, well, you can do and accomplish the exact same thing 
by coming to us and we're already established, we're audited, uh, we've been around for 20 years, our, we've got a board that uh, is plugged into the community, so if, uh, and we're really big on honoring the donor's intent. And that board also provides fiduciary oversight, right. so you have sort of the four eyes principle where right. they don't have to trust an individual, they can trust that individual, but they're also, they, kn they know that there are, there are a group of 13 that are also looking out with yeah. them after well, and therapies. as you well know, a, a lot of times some of the uh, the charitable interest uh, either change or right. totally go away. Well, that board is in place to make sure that the donor's intent, you know, stays in, in whatever. If, if, for example, that something did go away, that well, maybe there's something that kind of matches up with that same philanthropic intent that right. we can direct it, even though the donor may be gone at that point. So what is the geographic definition of your footprint? Where do you um, provide funding? Um, are there limits to the types of organizations uh, that, that can receive? Yeah, not really. Uh, the geography, uh, you know, we are the Bartlesville Community Foundation. So, so Bartlesville. Bartlesville, you know, about 45 miles north of Tulsa. Um, and so a lot of our uh, attention is in the greater Bartlesville right, area, right. Washington County. But we also are, are kind of branching out into Osage County and neighboring Nowata mm -hmm. County. But, but really, uh, f because people have philanthropic interest everywhere, mm -hmm. We're not really limited in that respect to geography. Now, yes, when it comes to, as you mentioned, meeting community concerns, we tend to be focused uh, right. primarily in the Bartlesville area. But we've got uh, donors that have funds with us that go, you know, really all over the world. So talk about uh, the structure that you have internally in terms of your outlets for uh, philanthropy. You, you have donor advised funds, mm -hmm. you have restricted funding that, so so talk a little bit about how that actually functions. Yeah, there are several uh, different types of funds. Do the donor advised funds are probably the most popular uh, with community foundations right now. And describe right what, that act, what that term actually means. Yeah, well, it's when, you know, uh, donors uh, come together and they specifically identify uh, let's say three or four organizations that they want to direct that money to go to. And it's okay? often so, a cluster of donors. Yes, it can be. It could be in, in some respect. We have like a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. We have different families. But uh, let's say they pick, you know, four different charitable interests. Uh, one would be education. One would be church. One would be right. something in the community. And so they are directing those funds. Um, then we also have what's called a field of interest fund, okay? Well, that gets a little bit more broad. Let's say somebody has a real passion for elementary education, okay? Or uh, preschool education or, or something art. like that. Or, or arts, you know. Well, they, they may not have something specific right. involved, so they have that field of interest where it can go any number of, of places. And, and you're also helping to shape how that philanthropy unfolds. So, for example, on scholarships, there might be some interest in providing math scholarships, or it might be um, if, if you're talking about an area like uh, children and family or the arts, uh, you're actually helping to shape that and connect the appropriate organization with the appropriate uh, uh, donor advised. Uh, yeah, advice. well, and that's where the with our relationship with the donor comes in is mm -hmm. we've when it, especially when it comes to scholarships, uh, the, the people that are offering those scholarships a lot of times have a specific interest, and and a lot of times it's because they were in that field, and so they want to cultivate and help people that show an interest, that share an interest that they had. Right. So. Um, as, as this unfolds, as, as you create that, uh, these connections, you're actually, be, you're actually the vehicle for people to change their communities. How do you come together as a group and think together about what that is going to look like? Sure, there, there are a couple of ways we do that. Number one, as I mentioned, we have our board, and, and so the board uh, can identify on its own uh, certain needs. Uh, one of the programs that we have is something called Flash Philanthropy, and that's when uh, people kind of pool their resources for... It's like a flash mob? <laughs> a flash mob, yes. <laughs> and, 
a flash mob for good. We're all going to get together. We're gonna, we're so, gonna, so it's it's like it's like building a barn, right? We we, we need to build a barn. Let's right. get together and build a barn. But in this case, you're you have flash philanthropy. You're you you're identifying a need, and you're saying, okay, who wants to jump in the pool? Right. And and take uh, for example, let's say you're you're in a dinner club. We all chip in X amount of dollars. And then uh, what we can do is people can apply for those grants. And what they do is they come in, make their presentation, and then we just kind of decide, okay, well, okay, this is really going to help some single mothers. This is going to really help in transportation. This is going to help. And so they get to choose and boom, it's right there. Well, that's really important to, to understand that there are a couple of aspects here that, that are just human aspects. If I'm making an investment, I want something back. What do I want? I want to have impact. So if I'm not going to get impact from my investment, I'm not going to make the investment. Right. I want to have an experience. I want to know something at the end. I want to have an emotionally positive experience of, of helping somebody else. So, so part of this is, is finding a way to satisfy the invest uh, the investor in that respect as well. Well, and and that's for the here and now, but then what we're also finding is that as as people grow older and we're into the baby boomer uh, generation here, uh, people are are retired now at the end, or are approaching the end of their careers mm -hmm. and they've supported certain philanthropic interests for years and years and years and now they're at a stage where what do I do now? How can I ensure that the things that I care deeply about can benefit from my giving after I'm gone. Right. One of our programs that we launched this year is the, uh, the, the Keep Five program. You can take care of your family, but keep 5% for the, just 5% for the community. And so you can take care of your, your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren, but then the community that you spent your life working in, that you love, that you have a passion about, uh, or not just the community, but any other philanthropic interest that you have, well, we can help you 5% of whatever it is stays locally. Isn't this another articulation of the American social compact? Nowadays, we get these media messages that it's all about me, 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 me. It's right. what I consume, it's what I wear. It's 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 uh, the plastic surgery that I get. It's 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 it's, it's the re it's the renown that I receive. It's, but but that's really not what America was founded on. It's not right. what we're really about. We're really about us. Right. Well, and Bartlesville is such a special community, um, and I, I think Oklahoma is as well. We're we're very grateful people. Are, we're very charitable people. We're very giving people, uh, as evidenced uh, time and time again, and 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 it, it is that exchange, that that energy, as you said, that uh, I want to give back, and and but I want to make sure that I'm doing it the right way and having the most benefit. Yeah, there may be some tax advantages to me, but at the end of the day, which is fine, you know, we're just following the rules. But at the end of the day, I want to make a difference. Uh, and, and leave the place better than I found it, it for makes, future generations. It makes Bartlesville a better place to live. Sure, sure. And, and that's really what we're about. We're trying to create good places to live for ourselves, for our children, for our neighbors. Mike Wiltz, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Bartlesville Community Foundation, and thank you so much for your insights. Oh, thank you for your time. Enjoyed it. <laughs>